Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL Faster Than Lights Advanced Edition. So, it's been a little while since I've been posting anything, sometimes you just need a bit of a break, so I decided to just leave uh, YouTube alone for a little bit and then come back in once I was uh, back in the mood for it. So here we are again, playing some more FTL. Let's get into this. We're playing with a new Type-C ship today, specifically the Slug Cruiser Type-C. This is the Aerial Max, which is a term which refers to the Banana Slug, which is appropriate given that this Slug ship is more or less entirely yellow. And uh, we are going to uh, kit this thing out and get ready to go with it. But what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a ship which has a bunch of different options. For example, it starts off with both mind control and hacking, which gives you some interesting abilities to control the enemy's ships and systems, crew and systems, rather. You also start off with things like the chain burst laser as your only weapon, which is not particularly powerful, but is supplemented by your other systems. You have slug repair gel, which allows you to automatically repair breaches, as with any slug ship. You do start with more powerful doors, which is interesting. Starting at level 2 is definitely nice, but you do lack sensors entirely, which makes using mind control a bit trickier, as you can't use that on a system that you cannot see. So hacking a system is currently the only way we have of activating that mind control system as it stands, or if somebody boards us, we can mind control them then. We also have three slug crew to get us started, which is quite nice, so we are going to rename them and our ship, and hopefully get started here. We are going to be playing here with the VSS Citrus, there we go, and that is quite appropriate for slugs because we can quite easily have, uh, you can be Lemon, our captain is Lemon, there we go, you can be Lime as you are a green slug, and you, my good friend, can be Orange and an orange slug. Perfect! We have Lemon, Lime, and Orange here ready to make their way across the galaxy and spread the love of Citrus to everyone they meet. Hopefully it'll go well. We are playing on hard with Advanced Edition content enabled, of course, so who knows what'll happen. But let's get out there and see what it does. The data we carry is, of course, vital for the Federation fleet. We need supplies for the journey, so make sure we explore each sector before moving on to the next, and of course, we have to get to the exit before the pursuing rebels can catch us. Oh yes. So, let's move Lime over to the shields, because I like having that shield skill trained up earlier on. It is a little bit more difficult to train up shields once you have high evasion, so it's nice to get it early in the game. Power up our systems, make sure spots are saved, and let's see what we can do here. Now, our first sector is an important one for this ship, because not only do you want to try and power up your defenses, but you really need to power up your offense as well. This is not a good first jump. We see a small station fitted with hundreds of repair drones, where we receive an automated message in it. They don't know who we are, but they don't care. This is the right place for some ship repair. We're going to ignore that, however, because we have full health, as that was our first jump. But yeah, since the ship only has two lasers worth of damage, although the hacking does let you get shields down, it can be a bit of a problem, because if you get into later areas, even Sector 2, you can start getting... Uh, two shield enemies, which can be quite hard to deal with. Let's dock with this refueling platform, though, and see what happens. We dock and signal a few station staff to begin refueling. We're going to seal our blast doors, because we can be never, never be too careful when docked. Pirates hidden on the station are confounded by our security locks, turning an attempted ambush into a fish-in-a-barrel firefight. We take control of the station and take its fuel reserves. Oh, that's kind of cool. So we had five fuel there, murdered a whole bunch of pirates. That's a nice start. We could really do with some more scrap, though, so let's keep jumping and see if we can get something else going here. This beacon has been built for a nearby civilian space station and nobody hails us. Well, we're getting a kind of unfortunate first couple beacons here. Hopefully we can turn things around. He jumped into an asteroid belt, which is probably not a good idea. A pirate ship lying in wait inside this asteroid belt immediately moves into attack. We turn to fight them and they've got a defense drone Mark II, which is insane firepower for this early in the game. Holy cow. I'm going to mind control this human here. Mind control on the NG doesn't help us that much because it's more likely to just basically do nothing. But yeah, this is a bad situation. We're going to hack their drone control if we can, but that's not going to happen because they have a defense on Mark II. Unless we get really lucky and try and shoot an asteroid down. Oh, they actually got through. Wow. Unfortunately, our shields got knocked out by what looks like an asteroid, even. Hack that. Make sure they're not as well defended. And we're going to take a shot at their weapons quickly. There we go. Hopefully keep them down for the count. Unfortunately, their NG went to go repair it, so we'll be back up again in no time. The defense drone was not knocked offline. Shields are back online, which is good, but that might not be off quick enough. Oh, just barely dodged that one, which is lucky. This thing is going to be a problem, though, so we're going to take a shot now that it's already moved. Unfortunately, we did not get through their defenses, which is bad luck for us. We almost have our mind control active again, and we almost have our hack ready again, so we'll be able to use those to help us in the future. But there goes our shields again, because these guys have phenomenally good aim. 
which is really not good for us. We're going to activate the hack now, and we're going to take another shot of the weapons here to make sure they can't constantly hit us with everything they fire. There goes the drone, which will give us a little bit of time before that thing comes back again, which is nice. We're going to take a shot over here at the engines, try and kill both of those crew. Fantastic, they're going to just an NG left, which is significantly new to their ability to fight back. Chain laser into the weapons, knocks it out perfectly. There we go, that's what we're looking for. We're taking a bit of damage so far, but nothing too nasty. Take another shot in there. Hopefully we get lucky. Very nice. We got in. They try and surrender some equipment from their stores, giving us three fuel, a drone part, and eight scrap, which is pretty good. That is a pretty good offer. The fuel makes it pretty valuable. But we're not going to accept their surrender, because we got a bunch of fuel from events already, so we're going to try and see if we can get a bit more lucky than that. We're going to activate the hack on the drone again. There we go. Mind control the NG again, so we see how much health he's got. He's got 62 health, so we can't prevent him from uh, dying here, but we can smash them up a little bit. I like how that drone definitely fired while it was still hacked. And goodbye, Pirate Disruptor. Nice try. Alright, that could have been much worse. Ship explodes, giving us a missile, a drone part, and 12 scrap, so it probably would have been better to take the other offer, but at this point it doesn't really matter. Now, uh, Lime has a bit of damage there, but we're actually going to let him live. We're not going to kill him yet because he still has more than two-thirds of his health. So it's not really worth murdering him over that. Move over this way and see what else we can accomplish here. Scans show remote settlement being blockaded by a pirate ship. The ship hastily messages us, saying, Stay out of this or you'll be next. Concentrate fire on. But obviously we're going to attack that pirate to protect those civilians. Here we go. You asked for it. They pull away from the planet moving to engage. With a charge ion and a heavy laser though, those guys are pretty nasty. We're going to immediately mind control their mantis, who should start destroying some of those systems for us. Unfortunately, I thought he'd go attack, uh, or at least the NG would go try and fight him, but apparently not. Here comes a heavy laser. Please don't hit me. Of course, you hit me and set fire to my helm and stun my crew, which is great. I'm going to try and knock out your weapons here so you can't do any more damage to us. Thankfully, our shields should hold now. But unfortunately, we have no hope of actually maintaining our helm for the time being, which is not ideal. I'm going to fire another chain laser shot into those weapons. Hopefully we keep that thing offline before the captain gets back. No such luck this time. But there we go. Knocked it offline before they can get the shot off. That was definitely not ideal, but we should be okay here still. Now, we're going to chain laser them in the weapons again in a second once the NG repairs them. There we go. Ooh, they say they give up, saying they're terrible at this pirate thing anyway, offering us three fuel, a drone part, and 15 scrap, as well as an FTL jammer. The FTL jammer is not a great augment. It doesn't sell for a whole lot, but it's a pretty good reward. The thing is, though, if we don't accept, we'll get a reward from them and from the settlement. So I have to decide if this is worth both. I think this is good. This is a pretty good offer here. 15 scrap, three fuel, and a drone part is pretty good. And the augment really seals the deal. So this time, we'll let them go. They also give up, which means that they assuming, presumably, will not keep trying to murder this settlement. But who knows about that, really. They could just be saying that to get us to stop trying to kill them. We will, of course, apply Lemon to some medicinal airlocking. It's a lovely way of making use of our clone bay. Put some power in there, and just acquire, apply a quick medicinal airlock. It may feel as though you're suffocating for a moment, but don't worry, the feeling will pass as you die. There we go, you'll come back again fresh and restored, and you will be able to continue your day as previously. Other interesting thing about this clone bay, I believe it's only enough room for one person in here. Can you fit two? I don't think so. Yeah, only enough room for one person in that clone bay. So we're going to repair up our helm here, and then we will move on. Poor slugs. They'll probably see much use of that medicinal clone bay as we move forwards here. Let's jump onwards. We have a store on both sides, but no money to spend. We do have that uh, augment to get rid of those. Let's jump back here just before the Rebel Advance and then move up with it. We spot a small ship nearby, which seems to have been refitted for transport rather than combat. It doesn't want to engage us or our ships. Let's demand the surrender of their goods and fight them. We prepare to secure their cargo by force, and they obviously start to try and run away. They have three laser shots, though, that they can throw at us, which is not good news. We're going to mind control their captain just to give them a bit of a hard time there. They are, of course, going to send their crew over to stop them, which really doesn't affect us like we might potentially want. But we are going to need to throw a lot of firepower at that room as well. We're going to go for a hack on there soon. Their FTL is charging. We're going to take a bunch of damage here unless we get really lucky. Uh, that's not so bad. All right. Activating the hack. Go for the chain laser shot into the helm. They can't get out right now, which is ideal. Unfortunately, it turns out that their helm is a little bit more powerful than I might have hoped. 
This might be quite difficult for us to deal with, in fact. Here comes more shots. Ooh, only one damage again is good. We need to knock that helm out now, though, because they're going to be running away soon. Enemy FTL is delayed, but they do have more than half of that system repaired to be able to get away soon. We almost have our mind control ready, though, and then we can mind control that repair person before they finish their job, which immediately ne fully negates their ability to actually do the repairs. Chain laser in the weapons to knock out that firepower a little bit. Unfortunately, we knocked out the laser that's already fired. Thankfully, their weapons are out of sync as well, which makes them a little bit less effective, he says, as they immediately shoot us directly in the weapons. Well, that's going to make this a bit tougher, unfortunately, but we'll be able to hopefully mind control this guy once he gets in there before he can finish repairing the system. More damage coming in. We're having a really hard time with our evasion here. I could probably move over my crew to make that a little bit more successful, but... Yeah, this is not ideal. Mind control him. There we go. They should go fight each other now, which is basically what we're looking for. Trying to get them to kill each other off. More lasers coming in. Knocks out the mind control, of course. Chain laser. I really need to get some damage in here, because we're taking a lot of hurt here for no reason. They are both trying to get into the helm, which is nice. But, unfortunately, they have a lot of firepower to throw at us, and our evasion is just not working out for us. All right. We're probably going to try and chain laser the crew in the helm to kill them off so we only have one crew remaining, which redu seriously reduces their repair speed. Ugh, we're taking so much damage here, though. It's ridiculous. I cannot hurt them fast enough to disable them. And unfortunately, since we already put our hacking in their helm, we can't move it now to reduce their firepower. All right, chain laser. Get in there and hit them again. There we go. They're losing the weapons now, which is good. We're going to have you go start doing some repairs. We're going to have you start doing some repairs as well, because we really need to stop having ourselves dying here. There we go. Their weapons are now fully disabled, finally, which is good. Final chain laser shot before we potentially wipe them out. There we go. O2 should be back online now, which is good. And last shot for the kill. Goodbye, Pirable Invader. That was a nasty one, though. That really hurts. We detect faint life signatures from an attack piece of the hull. You're transporting prisoners, and the sole survivor offers to join our crew as a first step on his path to get revenge. They're giving us two fuel, two missiles, ten scrap, and Ken the Rockman. Well, Rockman, that is awesome to have you on board. We're going to need to rename you to fit our theme, although it's going to be a bit tricky because you are kind of a giant rock, which isn't exactly what I had in mind for a citrus theme. But we'll see. So, let's send Lime, let's send crew back to their stations, and then we're going to move people around a little bit. We're going to leave Ken in the helm, because a pilot Rockman is a great thing to have. And Lemon is going to take over the engines. Our crew is injured, but not badly enough that we need to medicinal airlock them. Ken, we're going to rename you... Hmm. You're very gray indeed, which makes this a bit trickier. Let's rename you Kumquat. There you go. I believe Kumquats are considered part of the Citrus family, so that should fit. And they believe, I believe they do have a gray outer shell, so that should fit well with this Rockman design. And uh, let's keep moving. We have a store right in front of us. Hopefully we can get some good here. We don't have a whole lot of money to spend, but maybe we'll be able to find something nice. We find ourselves surrounded by a group of mysterious alien vessels which hail us and apparently have some valuable technology for sale. Do you? You do not. Sensors, screw teleporter, and backup batteries, old shield bypass, and long-range scanners. None of the things we're looking for are here. There's no weapons. There's none of the systems that would be useful to us at this point. So, we're just going to sell our FTL jammer for 15 more scrap. I might sell the slug repair gel as well, because that's a 30 scrap easy sell. And automatically repairing hull breaches is not particularly important. So we're going to do that to get ourselves more scrap early on. Buy ourselves a little bit of repairs. And we're going to keep that 74 scrap for other purposes. We might go ahead and power up our shields now. I don't really want to do that with our money right away, but we kind of need the extra defensive power. So let's do that quickly and jump onwards. Now, we don't have a whole lot of room here either, but hopefully we'll be able to get a couple more jumps before we hit the exit, and hopefully we'll continue to get some good profit from these beacons. Once we arrive, our screen lights up with warnings. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools and have tried to shut down our engines. Our crew managed to keep them barely operational and move into attack. Well... We can counter the remote hacking, but that doesn't really matter because we only have one bar in our engines anyway. So if we just say continue, that doesn't do anything, and we can still use our hacking system to disable their weapons, which is what we're going to be trying to do. If you use the hacking system to counter their hack, you keep your engines fully operational, but on the downside, you do lose the ability to actually use your hacking system in the combat, which is not what you want to have happen. We are pretty well defended against this already, given that we have... Um, I was hoping the burst laser would go down first, given that we have two layers of shields now. But still, 
This is definitely not ideal, and they managed to hit us anyway, as was undoubtedly to be expected. Fire another chain laser shot in there, knock out that weapon. There we go, now they're not so dangerous. And of course, thanks to the powered up doors, they can't actually get in there, which is ideal. Now, I could mind control the rock man in a second, but I don't think we're gonna do that. Well, they did break the door down recently. Well, I guess we could try it. We're gonna mind control the captain again, though. We do wanna try and kill the crew. He's not interested in coming down to fight, though which is unfortunate. We have to kill Rebecca in person then. First though, we're gonna knock down their shield so they can't hit us as easily. Or whether we can hit them more easily. Apparently our, uh, our clone bay is on fire. We're gonna have to let that fire go out quickly. And there they go. They're trying to come in to repair things. We're going to not let them in. We're gonna keep doing some damage here. There we go. We're not going to be able to kill the crew here, so we're not going to worry too much about it. We're just going to murder these guys before they can do anything else. It's too bad. If he had gone around the other way, he'd already be in there. Poor Rebecca. All right, chain laser, go. Goodbye, pirate interceptor. What do we get from destroying you? With the pirate ship destroyed, our ship's system is restored to full functionality, and we get four fuel and 18 scrap from the debris. Well, we get lots of fuel from these guys, which is definitely nice. This fire is persistent, though. It does not want to go out. Is there a fire in one of the other rooms nearby? Is that why? No, it's just there. Okay, weird. Turn the O2 back on, vent some rooms around. There we go. We can only put one crew in there, so we might as well stick Lemon in there to do some repairs quickly. And then we'll be able to move on. We have 22 scraps. We can buy another power bar if we want it. Just take a quick look at what we're looking at. Nothing fancy. Let's buy that. Oh, no, we can't. They're 25 scrap now. That's right. That's right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We will not buy another power bar just yet then. Repair up our, dr our clone bay and then move on. All right, we could go over this way, then here, then to the exit, which is what I suspect we will do. So let's jump over here and see what we see. We recognize this ship as a well-known slave trader. He hails us, offering us laborers for cheap, but we're gonna attack that slaver scum instead of taking his petty offer. He has a laser drone and a heavy laser, which does have the potential to get through our shields if he does a lot of combos like that, which can be quite nasty. But we should be more or less safe from his firepower in here. They have a clone bay on board though, so making anything happen with murdering the crew is pretty unlikely. We'll see, though. And we're just going to take some pot shots at their shield to make it a little bit more susceptible to our damage. Unfortunately, my aim is really bad. We could, of course, try and knock out their clone bay as well, especially since they're about to have a crew die. Doing so would make sure he dies for real, which would be really valuable for us. There we go. He's dead, which is awesome. We'll be able to mind control them again soon. We're going to go for another shot in the shields here. Thankfully, our shields are holding up nicely against their onslaught, which also gives us a good amount of experience for our shield crew, which is also very nice. There we go. Shields are down again, so we can mind control them again in a second and hopefully do some more damage to them. By mind controlling our Mantis crew, he should immediately come down and start attacking the shields guy. No, apparently not. He's going for the drone control instead, which isn't necessarily bad. It just means it's less likely we'll be able to easily kill all of the crew. Next chain laser goes into the Mantis. There we go. They're trying to run away now, which is going to be difficult because there's nobody actually on the helm. And their Mantis is blowing up their engines, which is going to make things also difficult for them. And they're trying to repair the clone bay in a hurry, which is going to make things also difficult for them. So I think we can probably... If we can get another mind control and get them to actually fight each other, we could kill them like that. But I don't know how well that's going to actually happen, because they don't seem too interested in actually doing what we want here. They seem really intent on fixing these various systems. If we mind control the Mantis again, though, he should go fight that guy. There we go. And... Once he's finished moving, Chain Laser will kill him and leave the ship intact. They try and surrender. Unfortunately, you're already dead, son. Surrender's not an option. There we go. We find a number of slaves in the cargo hold. They look at us questioningly and asks if they're to be released. We could use more crew, but we don't want to force them all to work for us instead. Well, we could get a Mantis, a Rockman, or an NG here. I'm not sure which exactly we prefer, but having an NG on board to do fast repairs would probably be very nice. So we're going to demand the NG joins our crew, but release the rest. Verify primary objective is to defeat rebels, re-establish peace. We nod, and it responds, Acceptable. We drop the rest off on a nearby station and strip the ship, getting two fuel, a drone part, 16 scrap, and magni. Welcome aboard, NG. You're going to take over... nothing? Doors for now, I think. I think it'll be mobile repairs if we need you. All right. <clears throat> now we have more powered-up doors again, which is even better. And uh, 38 scrap to spend. We need to rename magni, though. Unfortunately, we have another gray crew, which makes this a bit tricky again. <clears throat> Hmm. I'm going to rename you. You're going to be Grapefruit. There we go, Grapefruit. Welcome aboard. Lemon, lime, orange, kumquat, and grapefruit here on board the VSS Citrus. <clears throat> we do need to hurry up and find some more firepower. We're doing pretty good so far for only being in Sector 1. Let's see what we find here. The only other ship at this beacon messages us. 
Finally, after months of waiting, someone has fallen into our trap. Well, you guys can't hurt us, unfortunately, so I do feel kind of sorry for you, but we're going to mind control your rock, man, have you guys kill each other. Oh, no, we're not. I guess I didn't mind control the person in the helm, he wasn't too bothered by it. But we really don't care about those two lasers. <clears throat> this is a good opportunity for Lime to get more shield skill quite easily. We could do something like chain laser the helm to make them go deal with it, but eh, why not? There we go. We want to try and avoid damaging the ship if we can help it, because we should be able to kill these guys pretty effectively if we use our mind control properly. So let's try and do that. We should be able to at least kill the NG. The Rockman might be harder to kill with just uh, mind control, because the NG doesn't actually do much damage. But we'll see what happens here. Go for the mind control on the Rockman. That should bring over the NG. You have a good amount of health left. Yeah, this is probably not going to go too well for us. Try and do some more damage to him slowly. There we go. Pings off a lot more of the NG's health than I probably wanted, though. Not that they do a whole lot of damage to each other anyway, but any damage done to each other is better than no damage done to each other. Fire another chain laser shot in there. Like I said, this is going against what I was just saying, but that's fine. I'm just trying to keep them somewhat disabled and occupied while we fight them here. <clears throat> Almost leveled up our shield skill, which is nice. We're going to be able to mind control the Rockman again, which should guarantee that the NG dies and should do a bunch of damage more to the Rockman. He has 80 health, though, though, and the ship only has 40 hull. So unless this gets him below 60, the odds of us being able to kill him are basically zero. Yeah, that's not going to work out for us, but that's fine. We'll take some more shots at him, and hopefully he'll take the ship down with him. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. There we go. Although, if the ship resists hull damage like that, now we might be able to kill him. That is definitely convenient for helping us murder this crew. One more chain laser here has the potential to kill him off this time. And it did, in fact, do so. Perfect. That one hull resist was exactly what we needed. With the crew dead, we take six, fewer, six more fuel out of their storage and 20 scrap. We have 28 fuel in Sector 1. That is ridiculous. All right, let's jump to this exit beacon and get out of here because we're going to have no more time after this anyway. Well, for this sector anyway. We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon, we have Fuel Drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector, and we find a ship refueling station here! Of course we do. Sure, let's buy six fuel for 12 scrap. We probably never need to buy more fuel again. We have 33 fuel, which is outrageous for this early in the game. Let's jump to the next sector, we have two options, NG Controlled or NG Controlled. A lot of options there, really. Let's jump to NG Controlled sector, because that sounds like a good option to me. And here we are. We've arrived in NG Space, where the fall of the Federation has brought tough times to these robotic life forms, and they're usually willing to help. Although I am out of water, and as you notice, my voice is a bit scratchy today, so I'm going to go grab some more so we don't run into any trouble later in this episode, and I look forward to seeing you again in a second or two. There we go, that's much better. I also changed the audio settings, because as I came back, I noticed the audio was really quiet, and I noticed that instead of being set at about two-thirds normal settings, it was about one-third for some reason, so I had to change that. Not sure what was going on there, but now the game audio should be a little bit more audible. Either way, here we are in an NG-controlled sector. We need to get a move on, see what we can find out in this place. There's probably some good stuff to be had for us, if we can find it, as we do have an NG crew on board, which mainly generally means you can get some nice things here. Wow! That's a good start. Debris from battle is scattered on this system. A few pieces bounce against our ship. We passively scan them and discovered there's a functioning weapon amongst, amongst them. Eight scrap and halberd beam. Thank you very much, game. I will take it. That is exactly what we're looking for. Weapons that let us do damage beyond only having a chain laser. A small rebel ship docked at a nearby station spots us. We try to lay low, but it doesn't work. We have to power up weapons. All right, they've got a fire drone, a laser, and a rocket of some sort. We're basically pretty well defended against these guys. We're going to immediately mind control their captain. They've got no med bay, so this should work out pretty well for us. They do have a rocket launcher. I'm not too keen on those. So we're going to hack that weapon system quickly, so hopefully they can't fire it at us anytime soon. We're going to wait until it gets close to firing, go for the hack now. We should be able to lay down some damage into that system with a chain laser in a second. Now, there's no guarantee we'll be able to hit them. They probably have some pretty decent evasion, but we'll see what happens. There we go. Missile goes offline, and nobody can easily get into that system either, which is ideal. So this is working out exactly like we could have hoped it would. Okay. The crew is also taking some damage, which is great. We're going to fire another shot in here, see if we can knock that rocket launcher even more offline. Good, we can. Scoops is in there trying to repair the system. That's going to be difficult for him since he has very little health and no assistance in there. We're going to mind control their captain again, which he also has very low health. This is good. This guy probably has full. Yeah. Nausea there is it's definitely still at full health. We should be able to hurry up and do some damage to Scoops if we can hit him quickly. Looks like Martin is going to get killed by Nausea during this mind control phase, which is nice. There we go. You're dead. Fire the chain laser into the weapons again. We're having a hard time hitting them now, which is fine since we do have that buffer zone of damage there. 
And we also have a hack ready if we need it. There we go. Knock it offline again. There's one crew left alive in there. If we mind control the remaining crew, the odds are we're not going to be able to make them fight each other. But we can definitely try. We have another chain laser shot if we need it, but I am trying to get them to murder each other, which doesn't look like it's going to happen. We're going to kill off this crew. This person has 49 health left, so we should be able to pretty easily kill them with only three shots that need to connect before she goes down. 34 health, yep. Ooh, destroyed her own helm. I have to be very careful now with our mind control, because we do too much damage to the ship, we won't be able to kill the crew successfully. They sent us a message saying our ship is surprisingly well equipped and offer us four fuel, a drone part, and nine scrap. We have a million fuel right now, though, so we don't need to accept that surrender. We're not going to fire until they actually get into this weapons room, though. I think she might actually have too much health for me to kill her now, which would be really unfortunate. No, 19. She's, she's definitely in killable range. One more shot. Oh, the fire might have got her there, but unfortunately she got away just in time. Chain laser will kill her, though. She has no chance of survival here. There you go. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we got two missiles, a drone part, and 14 scrap out of it, which is actually not as good as their surrender offer, I don't think. But whatever, we killed them, which is what we're aiming to do here. 68 scrap, we have a distress beacon and a store and another distress beacon, which is really nice. Let's go to this distress beacon, then the store, then this distress beacon, see if we can get enough fuel to get anything good. We already have a really nice weapon to combo with our chain laser, but we need to be able to power it up first. We arrive here at a smoldering NG research station. It's distress call unanswered. Attack by pirates or mantis, most likely. There may be someone left alive or something else of value left on board. We do have our clone base, so we're going to take any risks here. We board the station. Our away team reports a wounded NG and a functioning drone schematic. Then someone yells. The station reactor is overloading and they're running out of time. Well, we could save the NG, but we already have five crew. I don't need another one right now. We're going to save the drone schematic. The NG don't feel things the same way other species do. They want the tech to be saved. Our crew returns safely to the airlock with their own control and put some distance on the system before it blows. 8 scrap and a defense drone mark 2. A very, very profitable jump right there. Another just speaking over there, which we could go to. I think we're going to hit the store first, though. See what we can do here. Probably going to sell that defense drone. The NG can do remarkable things with just a pile of scrap. The NG Hive at this beacon are selling equipment for just that. What are you selling here? Swarm missile launcher and Pegasus missile and 3NG. Yeah, not exactly what I was looking for, game. <laughs> not exactly what I was looking for. Buy one repair, back up to two-thirds. I... Yeah, that... no. <laughs> no thanks. We have six missiles, it's definitely not worth doing anything like that. I will sell the defense drone though for 35 scrap, that's a really nice little boost there. With 109 scrap on board, I can just about power up the weapon control, but I don't have any power to run it yet. So let's not do that just yet. Let's jump over to this distress beacon. See, there's so many distress beacons here, it's crazy. Let's see if we can get from there back to the other one and see what we can do. We find a number of ships fleeing from a small space station, and we hail them asking what's wrong. We find out they're being overrun by giant alien spiders. Well, that's no good, but we do have a clone base. Let's take the risk. Our crew boards the station, cautiously moving between corridors. Suddenly, a man-sized arachnid bursts from a vent in the ceiling, followed by countless more. We find our way back to the airlock and are forced to leave before accounting for all crew members, and not everyone made it back. Orange is gone. We take a hopeful trip to the clone bay, however, and to our relief, a clone is already prepared for the lost crew member. Welcome back, Orange! Back to your system, please. I should save crew positions, because I haven't done that since I got all these new people. There we go. That's less than ideal, and I can't actually make that jump back like I thought I'd be able to. Whatever. We'll jump over this way and see what else we can do. A mantis ship engaging a civilian hails us. Sparks fly about his cockpit as he yells, Stay out of this, human, else you are next. Well, obviously, we're going to help that civilian ship. These guys can't hurt us anyway, so we found a power up to engage the mantis. Alright, mind control that mantis, please. It should easily kill off at least one of our crew. They have two mantis and an NG on board, which will make things a little bit more difficult for us, but we should be okay still. They, like I said, their lasers cannot hurt us, so I'm not that worried. Chain laser shot in there should do a bit extra damage to both of those crew. There we go. Mantis is now attacking the other mantis, which is good for us. Unfortunately, it's going to make it a bit more difficult for us to murder the crew with just basic lasers, or chain lasers in this case. But it doesn't... it's not the end of the world. So, we're going to go for the mind control first, because, like I said, they can't hurt us anyway. So this gives us a good opportunity to mind control them and get them to do damage to each other. Without doing damage to the hull, makes it even easier for us to successfully murder the crew safely. He's only going to take, like, three shots, though. He's got to get no health. Never mind. Alright. Damage that mantis. He has 56 health left, that'll take 4 shots to destroy. The system of the ship definitely has enough health to survive that. Uh-oh. Uh, no, maybe not anymore. <laughs> we have to hit him with all 4 of these shots without missing, otherwise he will die before, the, or the ship will die before he does. He's got 2 health left, ship has 2 hull left. As long as these next 2 chain lasers hit him, he should die. Good. No more life signs are detected on the pirate ships. We get 3 fuel, a drone part, and 18 scrap, and we contact the civilians. 
They say the sector has become increasingly dangerous for friends of the Federation. They would give us five hull repair, which is quite nice, and that is all. All right, well, hard to say no to that. We have 127 scrap on hand now. I should really spend some of this. We can make it over to this distress beacon, which is great. With 127 scrap, I kind of want to go to that store too, but I should really power up weapon control so we can use the halberd bean chain laser combo because we don't have more firepower soon. We will die, so we're going to power up the weapons using an absurdly high amount of scrap to do so, especially since we can't effectively run them, but we're going to do it anyway because we need the firepower. The distress signals come from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. Their satellite defenses have gone haywire, and their repair crew can't approach the being fired on, so looking for help to fix or disable it, but thankfully we have an NG crew, so we promise to help and send their NG crew to remotely repair their targeting system. Our crew members able to remotely fix the glitch in the defense AI, allowing the repair crew to close in and finish the job. The station gives us its thanks, as well as a fuel drone part and 20 scrap, which we're going to use to buy power immediately, so we can more easily run the halberd beam, which we are going to definitely need. We could go to that store, but since we have no money anymore, it doesn't make much sense, so we're just going to jump over this way and move on. What do we find here? We arrive just in time to see an unusually well-armed NG ship destroying a small pirate craft. A teleporter signal is detected and we have an intruder on deck. A young mantis in a charred uniform is teleported on board and begs for sanctuary from the NG, offering to serve in exchange for our protection. The NG have already traced the teleporter's signal and are offering a deal in exchange for the prisoner. I generally agree to offer up the mantis in exchange for a bounty here. Either one has a chance of damaging your ship. It doesn't make much of a difference. We need more scrap right now to buy more power, so we're going to agree to offer up the mantis. The pursuing ship responds with a completely unintelligible message. The young man distracts to attention and assumes a battle stance. It was a trap. Alright, so it doesn't matter anyway. He's just attacking us. That's fine. We'll vent him out. He should be dead. And we're going to activate our mind control if we can by turning off our O2. These guys have potentially dangerous weaponry. But what we're going to do is we're just going to have mind control their captain, which should mess up their strategy anyway. This guy should die before too long. We're going to vent to the other side of the O2 as well, just to make sure he can't get through there and still do anything. The pike beam should be out of sync with these weapons anyway, though, so we should be fine. Halberd beam is almost ready. All right, there we go. If we can get at least one of these shots to hit, we should be able to do some pretty serious damage to their defenses. Pike beam is, in fact, out of sync. Here we go. Lots of damage. They have two hull left, which is ideal. I probably won't be able to kill the crew successfully here, but that's really not my major concern. I would love to turn the O2 back on since I've been venting the ship now, but we'll see about that. Just quickly, the chain laser can't actually hurt these guys, which is exactly why I was saying we need the powered up halberd beam, because otherwise we would not be able to do a darn thing. Thankfully, we should be able to mind control this captain who should come down and fight this guy. Yeah, there's no way they're going to kill each other, so we're just going to kill them with a the halberd beam here. Goodbye, NG Bomber. Nice try. You are destroyed. Ship explodes, giving us three fuel, one drone part, and 13 scrap. We'll take it. We'll also turn the O2 back on as soon as we buy another power bar to run it. There we go. Whew, our evasion is really bad, though. We definitely want to try and power up our evasion soon. If I hadn't needed to spend so much power getting the halberd beam online, I probably would have gone for it sooner. But this should work out in our favor still. We could go to the store, but again, no money means it doesn't make any sense. We have probably won two. We might have enough time for three jumps here. Let's do a quick, more solid visual measurement. If we have about this much space for that one, it should take about to here, and it should take right up to about the edge. It might be it might be a bit too close. Go to there, go to there. It's gonna be close, but I think we can take three jumps. We'll go one, two, three. And that should work out for us without us getting overrun at the exit. If we get overrun at the exit, we'll just have to deal with it. We jump into a sun, though, which is bad news. The ship has been placed too close to a super giant class M star, and the ship will gradually overheat to get out of there or die. A pirate oblivious to the dangerous sun moves in to engage us, but unfortunately for them, they are a very weak pirate. We're going to immediately mind control their NG, so they'll start fighting each other. They have an NG and a Zoltan on board, so they don't have a whole lot of health anyway. And we should be able to absolutely ravage these poor souls. They can't hurt us. The only thing dangerous here for us at all is the sun. Chain laser, go. All right, we could halberd beam their helm just to be mean. I think we're gonna halberd beam right through there though. I just wanna hit their helm and their weapons. They try and surrender, we say we do not accept their surrender and we're gonna try and mind control them again in a second. Now there is gonna be a solar flare coming in soon and since we just got ionized, it is gonna be somewhat irritating. That looking like we're gonna be okay here. Two shields means we shouldn't take too much fire damage. And let's see what happens here. Now they might not pay attention to each other. Uh, are... I'm not sure where those fires even went. Uh, since both of these guys are repairing things, they might not actually come in. They're dealing with fires in the O2. Okay, that might make it hard for us to kill them without destroying the ship. Really, NG? You have one health? 
All right, he has one health as well. Chain laser should kill him without killing the ship. Perfect. No more life signs remaining. We get two missiles, a drone part, and 19 scrap, and we prepare to move on. Good stuff. So we're going to turn off the O2 again so we can burn out this room quicker, and we're going to leave. We're going to head over this way and hopefully be able to make it to the exit before it gets overrun, like I said. Let's see what happens, though. Here we go. So, when they see the Mantis warship waiting in ambush at our intended coordinates, their crew is relieved to know we've jumped some way off the mark. But that doesn't make any difference. We're going to attack that ship anyway. They don't have a teleporter. They do have a missile. We're going to attack them and see what happens. We are going to immediately go for a hack, though, on their weapon system, which should prevent them from being able to hit us with a rocket before we can knock that system offline. We're also going to mind control their captain. Interestingly enough, the captain's position... Oh, that wasn't what I meant to do. Captain's position is on the other side of the ship, which is fairly unusual. We're going to go for the hack now, so they can't fire that rocket. Alright, on the plus side, those crew are also pretty far away from everything else on board the ship, so it should make it pretty difficult for them to repair things. Missile launcher still online? Not anymore, it's not. Alright, bit of a firepower waste there, but I'm not trying to kill the ship, I'm trying to kill the crew, like I mentioned previously. So, this is actually fine by me. Our oxygen levels are decreasing rapidly because of those fires, but we should still be okay. Now, this Mantis is going to give us a hard time, but we should be able to hopefully stop these guys from repairing anything too important. And we do have a hack ready if we need to. Mind control on the helm again. I guess we're going to have to chain laser this guy to death. He doesn't want to cooperate. The fire should kill him perfectly. There we go. Tok has 73 health, so the odds of us killing him now are basically zero, unless he comes into this room that's on fire. Which he might, if he can destroy this helm before the uh, mind control wears off. Oh, perfect. Okay, so what we do here is we do this, and this. There we go. Now he's locked in there. He can't repair anything quickly enough. They have another NG who just respawned. Right, I forgot about that. That would have been a good thing to keep in mind. They actually have a clone base. That's not going to work at all. Alright, time to kill them. Sometimes you forget these things. Goodbye, Mantis Interceptor. Ship explodes, leaving behind one fuel, one drone part, 19 scrap, and of course, since we have 11% oxygen on board this ship, we should really turn the O2 back on before everybody suffocates to death. There we go. So just barely avoided a mass suffocation there. I should probably wait a little bit and let our oxygen regenerate before doing anything else silly like that. But I am going to buy another power bar right now to put into our engine so we have a bit more power to play with anyway. Now thankfully, it looks like I guessed just right and the exit stops just in time. Fantastic. What do we see here? We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon, we have field drive this charge, we can jump to the next sector. Here we find a space station set up for travelers, browsing through its listings we find a tavern full of mercenaries for hire, two more NG, we can't hire anybody, we have no money, so we can just jump onto the next sector. And our options now are Zoltan Homeworlds or Mantis Controlled. Zoltan Homeworlds is a phenomenally beneficial sector, especially if you can get the Zoltan Homeworlds event, so we'll see what we can do here. This ship is looking pretty effective so far, although its evasion is really bad. We arrive here in Zoltan Space, and from what we've heard, they anticipated the coming war made preparations to hold their borders. Alright, well, thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing some FTL Advanced Edition here on Hard Mode on board the VSS Citrus. Our slug cruiser Type C with its crew, Lemon Lime, Orange, Kumquat, and Grapefruit. This is a pretty successful first two sectors, although our evasion is really low. But then again, our firepower is also quite high, so that kind of balances out a little bit there. Hopefully our ship continues to be successful in the future, and I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.